go out and get it in the morning about it. But not so much control in the centre of the field from Phil Kenny as Richie Bennett sends it high and over the bar. Your mother sends you down to the shop for a pound worth of goods and she gives you 50 pence. You can't get the pounds worth of goods, can you? Just about kept in. Oh, well, it's Charlie Buckley. To do that to Tomas O'Shea, he deserves to score from here. One of the highlights of the Sunday game. Let me find out there from the war court today. No more about him. He made all the run. That was it. Put the ball over the barrel. The fact that it, and that's it. No ifs, no buts. Is there much time left? We have a couple of injuries. Here comes Kieran Curry. Curry leading the charge of the left side. 45 minutes out. He's a chance to score. He's put it hard. He's put it hard. There's no sympathy in this game for anybody. Hello and you're very welcome to Treaty Talk with myself, Tom Clancy, and I'm joined by Matt O'Callaghan. Uh, normally, of course, we discuss all things positive across Gaelic Games in Limerick and uh, all on the field action, but uh, we must start this week on a much more sombre note. Uh, Matt, the passing of a, a, a great man associated with yourself in terms of uh, professional level, but obviously a friend and a man very much connected with the community in, of GAA in Limerick, uh, the passing this week of uh, Dennis uh, Din, Din O'Brien. Um, just tell me a bit about Din and, uh, you know, your, your even your own relationship with him. Yeah, I suppose um, it's, a, it's a deeply sad week um, for me personally and a deeply, very, very sad week for um, uh, the Vale Star and the Weekly Observer because we've lost somebody that was with us for 30 years almost. Um my relationship with Din, which was a very close one, goes back 22 years since I joined the company. And we set up a friendship and a working relationship almost from day one, from, right from the start. Uh, Din was, you, you know, he was he was a fantastic individual that, you know, that enriched people's lives um, for those that were lucky enough to get to know him or come across him. Um his efficiency knew no bounds. Um, his dedication to what he wanted to do, um, and the discipline now not only to what he would do for the GAA, which was massive, but also he was a mad, absolutely mad into coursing, and the amount of uh, contribution that he made to the coursing fraternity and the coursing family and to Glen Coursing Club was simply phenomenal. But he married all that, um, Tom, by being an absolutely excellent farmer. And, um, you know, at, at one stage, he, he was one of the local representatives back there on the um, the, um, on the, the, the board of Golden Vale Marts, you know. And, you know, that, 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 that was a prestigious position to, he, to, to, um, to um, hold. In a lot of ways... Um, Din, he, he hid his talents because a, a number of times, um, you know, I prevailed upon him. Nobody write a piece, you know, on this, that, or the other thing. And he, he was absolutely excellent. Like he could basically turn his hand to everything. But his, like, his appreciation of, and this probably stemmed from being a reader as well. His, his appreciation of, of what, you know, what was required to go into a newspaper was second to none. He, he's, you know, he, he, he had a knife for a photograph. He had a knife for an opportunity that, you know, that um, I, I, you know, I, I haven't seen it matched. Um, you know, I re remember great days with him in Croke Park, and God knows um, we, 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 we've had a good few now in the last six years. And thankfully, he got to see he got to see um, five All Irelands. And actually, Den was a member of a select band of a couple of people that got to got to Croke Park to see Limerick winning six All Irelands in Croke Park because Den was around in 1973. He was at the 73 final. And he saw the five and six years. So very few can say that because the year of the COVID, when the final was played behind closed doors, Din was there as a photographer. So 
for that reason, he's, he's uh, very, very few people have been in Crow Park for, for, for the three finals. Or for, sorry, for the six finals. I think that there was only about three three people that we could find out that were in Crow Park. But um, look, as a colleague, you, you, you couldn't ask for better. He had a great sense of collegiality. He had a great sense of, of, of um, what was necessary. Like, you never had to contact Dan O'Brien about de deadlines. He knew the deadlines and he met him. He met him religiously and diligently. Um, he's going to be sadly, sadly missed. Um, we're, 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 we're going to miss him. He, he has left a void in our organization that's going to be so hard to fill. But it, it, can, it, it, it pales in comparison with the void that he has left in his family and particularly his wife, Gerti. And um, um, the, the, the member, the, ex the extended members of the O'Brien and Trant families. And, um, um, you know, he, he's re if there is some, sol some bit of solace of consolation at this time, it is that he has joined his, his, his only daughter, Riedel, who died unexpectedly five years ago. You know, that, that's a crumb of consolation that the two of them are, are reunited in the other world at this stage. But all I can say is we desperately, desperately, desperately miss, miss him. And um, apart from meeting him at matches and doing our job together, we had long, long conversations on the telephone every week and, and um, even had one the week before he died, a week, just a week before he died. And I certainly, for one, you know, from the, the level of conversation I had with him on that particular day, I just couldn't countenance that this, 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 that the end was so near. I, he was so full of interest in everything like he had always been. And, you know, we discussed everything from Limerick to the Conan and Kirby, all the things that mattered in his life. And then there were many and varied, you know. And he, he's left a huge void, as I said, in the family. He's left a huge void in our organization. He's left a huge void in the GA family. In the coursing family, he's left a huge void in the social life of West Limerick because he, he was he was there with his camera to capture everything. And as I said, you know, you didn't have to ring Dino O'Brien and say, "Look, um, there's such a such a thing on in in Bradford tonight; it needs to be covered." Dino O'Brien always had the first view. He was totally, totally, totally clued in. And all I can say again is my deepest sympathy to 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 Gerty, his sister Joe's. And all the all the the um, the um, O'Brien and Trent families like this. This is a very 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 sad time for them. A great sense of loss, and a great sense of loss to us all. May them rest in peace. Yeah, certainly. And uh, Matt, I echo those uh, sentiments. And uh, again, to Gertie and the family, we we send our condolences. Uh, it's not some uh, just my own little two cents on it. I didn't know Din personally. Um, probably only said hello to him at games, club games in the last few years. Obviously, I'm uh, not a long, as, as long covering games maybe a, a, as you or him, Matt, but um, certainly you could see he had an eye for things uh, in terms of even even to get team photos taken, Matt. Is, uh, it's not an easy feat these days when teams have 20 and 30 players tagged out. He was able to do it and, uh, you know, no p nobody would have fallen out with him in, in the process and I'm sure they're all delighted uh, to see him coming along because they knew the quality of his work. Yeah, well, you, you see, the, 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 you, you, you struck something there, Tom. Um, he, 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 he struck a relationship with these people, you know. Um, everybody knew about his integrity. Everybody knew about the quality of his work. But, like, he then had a relationship with these people. You know, he had a relationship, you know, with the present Limerick team, you know, and different, they, they, you know, Dean O'Brien was the man you couldn't refuse. You know, and that was down to absolutely, you know, his integrity and the quality of service that he gave. Like, you know, he was an extremely funny man. You know, the many laughs that we had. And he never set out to be a funny man. Yeah. You know, he, he was he was extremely funny. He was a laugh a minute at times, you know. Nice. And yeah. um, I, 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 I'm certainly going to miss that. And, you know. So many times I laughed down the phone to him and I said, oh, Brian, you're flying now, you know, when he'd be on, on about something, you know, and he, he was so funny. I can laugh now, but I'm finding it hard to, 
you know, under circumstances. But, yeah. you know, Din, Din is an incredible loss. Yeah, certainly. Um, Matt, if we can move it along uh, towards the, the on-field action, I'm sure uh, Din would have been uh, heading towards uh, St. Brendan's Park in Burr this Saturday for the la ladies' division uh Division Four decider, a, a meeting of Limerick and Carlo, uh, a very important game in, in the on the field of play for for these ladies. But as we said already, thankfully they have uh, they have promotion secured, so uh, that's one box ticked. I suppose it's a, it's a case of now hunting a bit of silverware. Yeah, well, Din would certainly because we know the connection. Um, his niece Dimpness, the only Limerick player ever to win a um, a ladies football all star plus. By coincidence, the last time that Limerick played in the league final in 2016 and playing, she scored 2-5 in the final against Antrim. Which was hopefully, awesome. hopefully a good omen, Matt. Hopefully a good omen, you know, and that the girls will go out and win it for him on, on Saturday. But, yeah, look, it, it, it is fantastic um, to be in the final. And it, it, it is fantastic also, like, that before you set foot on, 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 on board, on 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 Saturday, um, you 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 have promotion secured, and as you say now, it's a question of getting silverware. Now I thought, you know, that, you know, it, it would be a half job done, with with, with 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 the squad when when they had got promotion. But having speaking spoken with connections of the squad during the week, um, like they they they're, they're far from that, you know what. They really want to get their hands on silverware. They want to crown <coughs> the league campaign with a piece of silverware. Now, if if you're looking for omens, they're good insofar as that Limerick's best performance um, have been in the second half of the final group game against Carlo, who they play on Saturday, and um, it, certainly the semi-final against Leitrim. Now, I... I, I was I looked at at some footage of it there during the during the week and um they were absolutely fantastic because you must remember when they beat Leitrim in the in the, in the semi-final. Only a short few weeks, I think just three or four weeks before that, they'd lost to Leitrim by seven points in Balnamore. And they led Leitrim all the way in the semi-final and um, conceded a goal which put Leitrim ahead. <coughs> Six minutes in there, five minutes into time added on, but still had the character, the belief, and the confidence within within themselves to challenge the kick out, get back down the field, and get a sublime goal from from Iris Canelli. So they will go, um, they will go to to um, to Bor on Saturday um, with a spring in their step. There's there, there is no doubt about that. So. Um, I'm expecting if if Limerick produce the performance that they produced in the second half against Carlo, which thankfully I witnessed, and um, the, the 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 semi final against Leitrim, I, I'd be quite confident that they will do well. Now their target, of course, and again as I said, speaking to connections during the week, is that um, they're going to up that performance. You know because like there were glaring weaknesses in the team in the early stages of the league and it, it, you know if in many ways it left them scrambling to qualify like there was there was the unforced errors there was the numbers of turnovers against there was the inability to to, to get scores and um like the management team <coughs> diligently applied themselves to all those failings and they were practically eliminated in the last game and a half, which is hugely important. Yeah. Uh, can, we, Matt, Matt, can I just look at the team here just to discuss that a, a bit? Uh, you can see it on your screen. I know you'd seen it earlier this afternoon. And anyone who's watching along will to be able to view it there. Uh, any surprises there? I know you've been to the games. I haven't been to, to one, unfortunately, this year. Uh, anything that surprises you or is it it's as you might have expected at this point? Well, I if you asked me to pick the team two or three days ago, that's the team I would have picked. Right. Yeah. Or if you ask me to speculate on what the team might be, that's the team that I would would have speculated upon. And I'm not saying that from hindsight because I've seen them in five or six games this year. And that mm. is without question the best best combination. Now we might see a change <coughs> in the half back line that sometimes um 
Maeve Mack goes to right half back and Grace goes to left half back. But apart from that, I I wouldn't I don't envisage that there would be any changes. The, the return of John John Maguire has been a huge success. Um, mm. uh, the placing of Cathy Mee at centre half back, Debbie Murphy at centre half forward, and I have said this time and time again. Um, and I am I'm I'm delighted to see Andrea Sullivan at full forward because I I honestly think that her best place is in the, her best position is in the full forward line. Now she's been out in the half forward line she, during games, and I don't think she's as comfortable there. And, and of course, Iris Kennelly at corner forward. Tom, I rate her extremely, extremely highly. And yeah, she, so yeah. she, has, she has proved it. She's proved it time and time again. So the nearer you have her to goal, the more important your attack is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you're leaning towards the Limerick win, but uh, will Michael Quilligan and Sean Kelly, do you think that there, there's enough there for their team to, you know, to say that? Confidently that they they can take the win. Now we're not saying that they'll they'll definitely take it, but uh, you you'd be we're quite. Not, confident. We're not saying it, but Carlo have two outstanding forwards, and Carlo play a lot of a running game, and Carlo are physically a strong side now. Yes. No, in saying otherwise, but in Rachel La, um, a Sawyer and Cleaning Ishay, they have two excellent forwards, and but you 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 must remember Tom. That uh, the strength of this Limerick team during the campaign, and I outlined what the problems were: the turnovers, the unforced errors, and um, the lack of scoring. There could be no criticism at all uh, directed at the Limerick defence, and a Limerick defence that was mean got considerably meaner when Kathy Me was moved to centre back. It was as if she locked the whole thing together. And you must remember, and I have given out this stat statistics in this forum before, that Limerick had the lowest score against in the seven games. Yeah. They only conceded 62 points, whilst Fermanagh, who topped the table, conceded 69. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, though, Limerick only scored 70 points. And the only county below was Kilkenny, who scored 30. Hmm. So you could see, but that has been rectified in the last two games because we've got a one eleven, we've got two ten. That yeah. is well up on the average of, of of winning games at this level. So you can see that it was paltry before that, like four points against Fermanagh, no score in the second half. You know that is all gone. That is yeah. all gone into the distant past, hopefully. And you know I give full credit to to Mike Quinlan. Sean, Sean Kiley and the management team, I, I think they've done an excellent job. And I, I, I think they're quite capable of taking them that extra step to get them over the line, Tom. Yeah. Now, well. the, the only thing that would worry me, and it is not the football aspect of it, it's the bloody forecast. It's yeah. a strong wind. Yes, could really spoil it, couldn't it? Yeah. You know how it can spoil football games in particular. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, so, um, we must, I, I, we must say this. Uh, it, about that, but other than that, if it could come down to football, Limerick against Carlo football, I'd be very, very hopeful that Limerick will do it. Yeah, and we must say with a, a bit of an asterisk that currently set for 2 p.m. in uh, St. Brendan's Park in Borough, but I suppose that's up in the air in terms of uh, we're not saying that they have said it will change but there is the possibility I suppose that it could change uh, if the weather continues to uh, to wreak havoc on fixtures it is down for a double header that's why I say uh, there's a little bit more likelihood that it might change you know if uh, the pitch might not sustain two games but at the moment all roads leading to bar for a 2pm start and uh, we're wishing uh, Roisin and the rest of the ladies and indeed the background team the very best of luck um, in that decider. Uh, Matt, Sunday, we'll actually, see... Yeah, Limerick actually have joined captains, um, Roisin and Ivan. Oh, apologies. Yes, Lee. yes, that's right. Yeah. Slight change from uh, from last year. Yeah, Ivan Lee, apologies, Ivan. Uh, that's, uh, she's indeed the joined captain there. Um, we mentioned, you mentioned the Lee there. That's a nice little uh, segue now to Limerick are on the, the banks of the Lee on Sunday and uh, Jimmy Lee... Uh, her uncle uh, will be in charge of the Limerick senior footballers for his first uh, championship outing in Limerick, meeting a Cork team. Limerick, as we know, no wins from the seven league games. Cork probably turned a bit of a corner, I think two wins and a draw to see out their campaign. Limerick are going to be under 
under pressure here, Matt, I think it's fair to say, against uh, against Cork on, on Sunday. They're going to be under pressure, but championship is championship. And um, I, I, I think Limerick turned a bit of a corner, you know. Um, if you look back and analyse it, Tom, when we were talking here and we were saying that before the before the Wicklow game, that if Limerick won their last two games, that they had a decent chance of staying up. They damn near came winning both to both of them, losing both by a point. Yeah. You know, nobody would have foreseen that situation at the start of the campaign when you lost very poorly to Antrim at home, to down away, and I go at home. Yeah. But like there, there, there seemed to be a bit of a change and a bit of um things started to come together when they pushed Westmeath all the way, you know, and then pushed Clare all the way. So there, there seems to have been measurable improvement from a very, very low base of you, the new management team coming in. You almost you had a half a new squad coming in, you know. So I'm I'm not despondent about it, but I, I I'm still pragmatic enough to to acknowledge the the, the task that they face. Now, Cork, Cork won the McGrath Cup. They beat Kerry after after um, extra time, or was did it even go to penalties? Yeah, I'm not sure. Penalties, yeah. But Cork won it anyway. They 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 they, they had a disastrous start to the league. Now you 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 know you know you can say all about mitigating circumstances that they had to travel to Donegal, they had to travel to Louth, and um, you know and for those first two games, Cork were down a number of players. I think they were down about seven players that would be frontline players. Um, for the trip to Donegal, and they were they were down almost as many going going to Louth, and but red lights on Lee side started flashing when they lost in the third round at home to Cavan. But they, then after that, they they they, they turned the corner, and it wasn't two games in a row; <coughs> they won three games in a row against Fermanagh, uh, against Kildare, and against Meath. So you know Fermanagh and and. And um, um, Kildare would have been strugglers, you'd say. You know, so what? They beat those two. But they had a very, very good win in Navin. Yeah. And I think what was most encouraging for Cork was that they got, got a draw with our man. Our man had to come back to get a draw in the final round of the league. So Cork, Cork on the face of it, appeared to be in a good place. Yeah. Limerick don't appear to be, you know... They, 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 appear, they appear to be in a difficult situation. Mm-hmm. But championship is championship. And I'm not for one minute going to come out here and and say that Limerick are going to beat Cork in in, in, in um, Park even Sunday. I don't think it's going to happen. But I think we're going to give a good account of ourselves. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think that's that's probably the that has to be the aim here to put in a performance, Matt, isn't it? You know, the, the prize for the winner is, is a meeting with Kerry and uh, I use prize in the uh, in the inverted commas there, but you know Limerick need to put in a performance that that they that they can they can build on into the Talton Cup because invariably that's where they're going to end up. So absolutely, like and you 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 can say you can say that Lady Luke sh- shone upon Limerick when it came to the championship because you yeah. got drawn against Cork away, and if if you if if you beat Cork if, and you you to play Kerry, you know <laughs> yeah. so. If if there was ever a draw from hell, this was it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But in fairness to Jimmy Lee, Jimmy Jimmy has taken all this thing in his stride now, yeah. you know, and he's gone about rebuilding team, re- reshaping his team, and um, you know, I I'm encouraged by the last four performances. Way more I have to say that I I think I see things coming together. I mm. see green shoots. Yeah, you know. Now, how that those green shoots will manifest themselves in Parky Creeve on Sunday, I don't know. Whether it will manifest themselves in a in 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 in, in a spirited and and a gritty performance, which you you're bound to get anywhere. But just to see if you get that type of performance, see where it takes them. Yeah, I I think that they're building up if they got a decent draw in 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 in, in the Tarleton Cup because we haven't won a game. In it since we won in the Tarleton Cup against Carlo uh, yes. in Carlo in last year, yeah. So yeah. you know that's a long time ago, Tom. So yeah. we, when Tarleton Cup time uh, will come around, we will probably be twelve months possibly without a victory if if we're if the if the Tarleton Cup is our faith. Yeah, 
uh, it'll be the best part of anyway yeah, at that point. So look, um, confidence, confidence. Hopefully, will have been rebuilt by those competitive performances, and you know maybe maybe things have been working on the training grounds in terms of like Danny Neville getting closer to fitness. Josh Ryan yes. obviously has returned, so there there is there is signs of encouragement uh, for this this squad, and hopefully uh, Sunday will will represent a, a, another milestone on that journey. Will the experiment of 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 keeping Josh in goals continue? Or would his power out the field, you know, um, like, you know, goalkeepers judge themselves by clean sheets. Josh has only conceded one goal in 120 minutes of football. Yeah. I'm I sure think, if he, yeah. he, he will point that out to us, you know, whilst he, yeah. he, 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 he has scored four points at the other end. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think he actually gave away the ball for that goal as well. So if he can tidy that up, if he could have tidied that up, he might have. Uh, he might be on zero. But uh, I think they might persist with the mess. You know, you it, yeah. it's, it's probably beyond an experiment at this stage. We haven't seen the team. So. He's a fantastic kick out, and you know, yeah. Josh Josh brings a lot of qualities, and um, it's unfortunate for particularly for the guy himself. You know yeah. that he missed out a year, but. I'll tell you, he didn't. He didn't waste the year because he made a huge contribution to Dune to, uh, to Ula, um, yes. manager or coach to their senior football team, and as coach to their successful under twenty one A team, which won the county. So yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't resting <coughs> all, all last year while he was recovering from injury, and it's absolutely great to see him back. And um, he was telling me before the start of the league that he expected to be back for the last two or three games, and sure. Um, sure, he made it, you know, which is great, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah. Well, uh, best of luck to the lads on Sunday. 2 p.m. start in uh, Super Value Parky Creeve to give it its full title. Uh, Monster Championship Football Quarter Final Limerick uh, against Cork. Uh, Matt, we look at the uh, underage teams uh, on the football front. I was in Ballygrand last Saturday, a very disappointing performance. Uh, Shane Kelly didn't pull any punches uh, when I was speaking to him post-match. Disappointing results for Limerick. One nine to six points beaten by Clare. It uh, removes them for, from the championship proper, as it were, and they're now into a B final against Waterford. We probably expected a bit more from this group, Matt. Uh, let's not sugarcoat it. We probably thought that they were good enough to be in the top two, but they've fallen short and probably, you know, in the end, they fell considerably short of, in fairness, a very strong Clare side. Yeah, um... Two things about it, uh, Tom. You and I were there when they were beaten by Cork in the semi-final last year. And um, speaking to Shane Kelly afterwards, you know, and um, he pointing out to us all of those that were available um, again this year, about up to 10 of them. Yeah. And God, you were saying to yourself, Jolly, this is good. Um, you must remember the nucleus of this team were there in 2021. When Limerick led Cork in the Munster minor final with less than 10 minutes to go. Now, all right, you have a tendency when you're looking at under 20, 20 you have a tendency to look back what happened three years, you know, but it's nothing more than a vague guide, Tom. Yeah. You know, and it's if you have success three years ago, it doesn't guarantee success far from it, you mm -hmm. know, and for, that, for those two reasons, I think it's disappointing, you know, very, very disappointing because I honestly thought, you know, at the outset of the competition, especially after drawing with Tipperary and Feathered. That that was a good result, yeah. yeah. Good result. And I had reservations after the game against Waterford and Belly Grand, which I was at myself. Yeah. Um, I was saying to myself, you know, and even I had more reservations than when I saw the result of Tipperary and Waterford which was a landslide for Tipperary. Hmm. As, as you said, they're out of the Munster Championship proper. They're into a B competition. Um, and they're playing Waterford in the final in Mallow on next Wednesday night. And it's an opportunity um, for Limerick to pick up some silverware. Now, interestingly, um, it, it, it is the John Cavins Cup right. that they're playing for. John Cavins was a great Cork goalkeeper um, who, who died all too prematurely. He won two All Irelands with Cork, but all, died all too prematurely um, um, some years after after winning his two All Irelands. Now the cup up to now was given to the winners of the preseason. You yeah. remember the preseason under twenty competition, which was disbanded this year because 
of the new format when they were giving games, Limerick were in the Liam O'Connor Cup, the top teams were in the John Kelms Cup. So the right. Kerrys, the Kildares, the Galways, the Corks, the Dublins of this world were playing for the John Kelms Cup. We were playing for the Liam O'Connor Cup with Offaly, Clare, <coughs> Tipperary, I think. So that's that's they're playing for the John Kelms Cup, but that, that's, that's an additional prize to it, Tom, in that whoever wins goes through to an All-Ireland B Championship. Now, I, this this is something that I just learned during the week. Likewise, now, yeah. yeah. And, but I understand from talking to you off air, Tom, or, or talking to you earlier today, that you've done a small bit of research to it. And well, as far as you can glean, that it's 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 one team coming out of each province. Yeah, that's that's literally about as much I know. I think there is, it's uh, all in semi-finals and obviously then a, a final. But we haven't gathered who... You know, is it the is it the fifth team in Connacht or the fourth team in Connacht? Uh, obviously, Ulster has nine. Is it an eight or nine team in Connacht, or is it maybe the sixth team? I don't know. Uh, this I I was trying to do a bit of digging online. Hasn't been relayed to us, so I suppose we'll we'll probably uh, cross that bridge maybe next week uh, if if indeed Limerick get over Waterford. So, but it is it, I I wasn't aware. You know, I thought Limerick were just going to play Waterford, and that was it. You know, so it's it it is it is an, a decent idea. I think it's potential for another. I suppose the back door has given him another three games, uh, a Munster B final and All-Ireland semi-final and an All-Ireland final, potentially, you know. Potentially. Uh, so that's, that's that's positive, I think, you know. Um, yeah, but from a game's point of view, Tom, I, I was just, just thinking and reflecting about it when I was doing a piece on it during the week. You know, you're, you're gone from rags to riches in terms of games here. Yeah, certainly, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you know you have, you've gone from, you've gone from one game... Or potentially three games to guaranteed three games, four games actually, potentially guaranteed. seven games. Yeah, that's it. You know, so um, look, there, 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 there certainly was a demand out there for it, and and by God, they've responded to it because we're we're in now to the second phase of the championship, and the mm. four teams that are in that are Cork, Kerry, Clare, and Tipperary. Now they are going to play a full round robin. Yeah. Three more games guaranteed, yeah. With the top two teams going through to the final, so it's it's it, it's a good format, you know. But um, there, I mentioned the word about burnout about all these extra games. Yeah, and no. it, there it, I mentioned the, there I mentioned the split season, and um, there I mentioned the multiplicity of games. But look, hmm. it, it's good format in my view, and. Um, the more, the more the games, the better provided, you know, that you can so, get them in within, within the calendar. Yeah, well, if Limerick and Waterford, uh, Clare and Tiberi were are ever going to close the gap in football and uh, Cork and Kerry's duopoly, well, this is probably the first steps towards that. There's other stuff needs to happen, of course, but uh, certainly one game a year wouldn't wouldn't close any gap, to be honest with you. So no, no. This, is, uh, this is the start, hopefully, uh, for a bit of a resurgence for those counties, uh, including our own. Um, the under 17s, Matt, they were underway on Tuesday night in Feathered last week, or this week, I should say, a couple of days ago. Uh, beaten well in the end by Tipperary. Now, neither of us were uh, on, on site for the game. Uh, disappointing start. This is um, this is a similar format to the 20s, similar to last year's minor uh, Darrell Darcy Cup that Limerick won. Obviously, this the, the four counties, the four weaker counties, uh, as it were, playing each other at once, uh, and then the top two into a final. So, Limerick. A little bit on the back foot uh, after a heavy defeat in, in Feathered. Tom, I'm forever an optimist. Ever an optimist, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to look at the glass half full, you know. Yes, yes. Last year, Limerick got a bit of a thumping in the first round. Also to, to Tipperary in, in McNeville in Park. I was at it the same evening. Yes. I think most of a chance. Now, John Ryan, um, the manager at the time, wasn't as downcast as I was. But they went on and they beat Clare, they beat Waterford to set up a rematch in the Darrell Darcy, Darcy Cup final against Tipperary and won it. Mm. Is there any reason why they can't do it again? I suppose not, no, no, no such reason. But uh... can, can, can lightning strike twice? That's what I asked myself during the week. But um, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I think it's going to be difficult from all I read and from all I heard. Um, they were under pressure, but Tipperary scored one for it. Pretty soon after half time, Tom. Yeah, the game was tight till then, wasn't it? It was tight until then, and and it sort of gave Limerick a, a mountain to climb. 
Mm. Now, obviously, Ger O'Connor and his management team will have learned quite a lot from it. Now, Clare, they, they're coming in on the back of a win. They beat Waterford with a last-minute goal in Quintal. The last touch of the game, I think it was. Yeah, the, the very yeah, last, the last touch less. of the game. They yeah. got a goal to win it by a point, I think. Yeah. You know? So, um, there's no disrespect to Waterford, but you just wonder where Clare are at. Mm. Yeah. You know? Um, because Waterford really haven't rooted up trees in the minor championship in recent times. But maybe they have a good side this year. Mm. And they, they certainly are very unlucky not to have got off to a winning start. Of, yeah. that, there, of that there is no doubt because I I was following it on Twitter and, um, you know, hey, presto, when they went three points up, going down into injury time, I said, you know, this is Waterford's day, you know, and all right, Claire closed it, but by God. Um, that was an Iris Kennelly type strike in the very last when there was no recovery, which she did against Leitrim, which we were delighted with. But um, yeah. I don't think too many in Waterford. And look, Waterford football has been struggling, like all the, the, the football in the minors at the moment. Um, but it has been struggling more than the rest, probably. Mm. And win would have done them a power of good, especially to go away from home and win. To yeah. the, to the Power of good. Now they play Tipperary in in Limmy Bryan in the in the um, in the next Second. round. So, um, but look, we we've got to focus on what's going to happen in Paddy Carroll Park next Tuesday night. Yeah. And what I happens in Paddy Carroll Park is <coughs> anything other than a win. We're out of the Munster Championship, and we're handing back the Darrell Darcy Cup. Yeah, and they're only so, one more game then. So that that is what is riding on it. So mm. it, it 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 it's a very very it's a hugely hugely important game in in terms of Limerick season. Yeah, but it has the, uh, the the optimism in me, Tom, and the green mist tells me, you know, if if you were, if it was possible to do it in twenty twenty three, you can repeat it in twenty twenty four. But it's a long shot. It is, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we shall see. Uh, an earlier start for that one uh, than the other game, six fifteen. Uh, in I think is the the new throwing time moved to Barry Grand, uh, which I can tell you you won't get a better pitch in Ireland at this stage. The pitch no, is uh, absolutely Tom, and the facilities are there, and you know yeah. it, it's it's just first class. And um, will you and I ever forget the the, <laughs> the intermediate final last year when we were co-commentating on it, and it was just yeah, we're still we're still talking about it. Was, it was just electric. It was yeah. you know. It was just fantastic. Yeah, the, the bomb-proof pitch uh, in terms of the weather, and uh, there ain't too many of them around, so uh, we should be there on Tuesday night, and uh, hopefully the miners can uh, get back on the Munster Championship horse, as it were. Uh, that is it, I think, on the football front. The seniors in action, as I said, on Sunday, the miners back in action on Tuesday, and the 20s in the Munster B final next Wednesday, so a busy few days for uh, all Limerick Gaelic football enthusiasts. Uh, Matt, we will switch now to hurling uh, this evening, as in Friday evening, if, uh, if we're listening on Saturday. The next couple of minutes might be a little bit out of uh, out of sync with you, but uh, the Limerick under-20 hurlers are in action. The first round uh, goes ahead, a pitch inspection earlier this afternoon. Limerick versus Clare in Six Mile Bridge. Uh, Evan Laftis takes charge of the 20s, having moved up from the minor team. Uh, what are we expecting from the, the, the 20s this year? How, difficult to know, maybe, but there's a mix there of last year's minors, a mix of guys that are on the senior panel, a mix of guys then trying to make a name for themselves. So there's a lot, a lot going on with this panel. There's a lot going on with the panel. I don't know if you can put it up there, Tom, but, um, you know, there, 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 there is a mix, as you say. And, you know, you look back, as I said, um, you, you look back three years and you look back two years and that's basically what you're looking for, the nucleus. But it, it is only a vague guide. But but they're mixed up. But, you know, there's a lot of very promising players on, the, on, 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 on that team. And none more so, of course, than Shane O'Brien, who is... Uh, have you there? Have you? I don't. I, jo I, I had a header earlier now, so apologies. I don't. He's, he's listed at number 14 anyway, I can tell you. He's 14. You've got a Langan who's, who, who has, you know... Got a shot with Limerick, and he, he he's he's playing full back now. Yeah. Very very nice to see Keen Scully back. You know, now Gerald and Monlin had got a chance with Limerick. David Fitzgerald got a chance with Limerick. You know, so yeah. there's there's a sprinkling of players there now with with um with 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 um 
in, in inter-county experience, which is which is terribly important and at this stage. Now, very interesting to <coughs> see Pierce Connery of Kil <coughs> Kilmark in goal. Yeah, he previously played outfield mass at my oh, yeah. yeah. uh, I'm not surprised to see him on it, but what I'm, uh, what I'm, uh, what I'm surprised to see is where he's placed in goals, but him. Pierce has, Pierce has loads of skill, great hands, everything. So I wouldn't be too worried about him in there. So he'd be, um, you know, we've we've seen Pierce out the field in the past and been been quite a good player. But he he's he, he this this would be his definitely he he would he would have another year if not two at under twenty level. Pierce is quite young. I think, I think one more, yeah, yeah, after this year. So he's effectively under nineteen, you know. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then you have Matthew Fitzgerald at at at, at centre back and Dara Farland, who was very good at minor level. He's named at wing forward. You have the two Farrells, Robert Farrell, Kildama Palace, Henry Oshin Farrell from Askeaton, which Jack would have no doubt if he was in your seat there. Now he would have reminded me long before now about him being <laughs> uh, so. Like yeah. you, you, you were good, and they're captain by Keane Scully, and it's fantastic to see Keane back. Um, after a troublesome year with injury, and um, I, I'd be I'd be quite hopeful. Um, now I was talking to Clare Connections about it it's a month ago, maybe you know, and um, the panels were on in their embryonic stage at that stage. But he he was he wasn't too hopeful about Clare, but you know I I've heard that from Clare before. I think. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Matt, uh, just to go across you there. Look, there's the there's the team that's listed for this evening. So yeah. there's a good spread of clubs, good spread of talent uh, in each line. Uh, obviously, you have uh, Mikey Fitzgibbon of Captain Moore and, and Con Hayes of Newcastle West, too. This maybe you didn't mention there, but uh, some uh, no, men's... Wayne Cairns, no, Wayne Cairns is after a very good season with, with, with Napiershig. With, mm. with Con Hayes was on the under-20s last year. Now, Hugh Flanagan has made a quick transition from um, a minor up to... Um, under 20 level, yeah. you know. So, you know, and if, if you look at the subs, very, very interesting subs. Now, Fiona O'Brien is the sub goalkeeper. He's the son of John O'Brien who played in goals and a grandson of the great Jim uh, from 1973. Tyg Body, Sean Casey, <coughs> Doral Coughlin, Liam Fitzgibbon, or sorry, Liam Dinehy, Jack Fitzgibbon, Vince Harrington, Mark O'Reard and Daniel Scully. You know, they're, they're all names that roll off the tongue, Tom. Mm, yeah, yeah. When, and you nice talk, when you talk about the Limerick Championship and when you talk about um, Limerick underage, like Tyke Body had a great year with, with St. Flannan's in Innes. Um, Sean Casey was the Limerick minor centre back last year. Donald Coughlin had a great uh, breakthrough year with Dune. Liam Dinehy with, with Glen Rule for the last couple of years. He has two monster minor medals. Jack Fitzgibbon, who's, who's um, um, he, his brother, Shane, is injured was also a member of the squad. Like Truman Attack are very well represented on this squad. Vince Harrington, we know about him from, from Napiersheet, Marco Reardon, Daniel Scully. You know, it's and I'm looking at the subs now and I'm, you yeah. know, to say that I think, you know, um uh, it's it's not one of those cases where you say the fifteen you have is all you have. You yeah. have options there on that bench. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, we'll see how to get a, uh, get on against Clare. I think Cork are probably the, the favourites for this championship, having won it minor a few years ago. But as we keep saying, no real guide to success. Hopefully, Limerick have, uh, I suppose, put together a formidable squad from the under 18s, 19s, and 20s, the best of, of what's around. And uh, we can see this group format that they, they can pick up enough points. They need to be in the top three to get to a Munster semi final, second place, third, and the group winners straight to the final. So that will be the target for all of these counties. Uh, Limerick are back in action on the home front in that in round two, facing Tipperary next week at the TUS Gaelic Grounds, which will feel like uh, feel like going to another planet, Matt, for us if we get back there. Have not been there for <laughs> probably half a year now at this stage or more. Um, so just to to move things along, the minor hurling hurling team, uh, our Shane Dowling is the manager, of course. They're in action next Thursday in Parky Cueve. That's the round two clash. But uh, Limerick were idle in round one. They are facing Cork in Parky Cueve. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the the, the squad here. Uh, we it's don't a have, Cork, have it's a Cork team now that are already down. Uh, they've, they've been defeated by Tipperary. Yes, yeah, they were beaten last night by uh, was it a handful of points in the end. I can't remember the exact score. Four, four, four points in the finish. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a quick gloss over this squad. Uh, I will get to it in more detail in the coming weeks. Patrick Kearney was involved last year. Uh, I see just another couple of names on it there. Uh, Joe Fitzgerald was the goalkeeper last year. He was. I think he's, that's he's about involved. the extent of what was involved last year. I, I think I remember right. going through it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and there's some guys from the 16s. Uh, this group won the uh, Arabon Cup uh, a couple of years ago, which is a much prestigious competition at under 15 level, I think. Is it under 14? Under 15, isn't it? They won that uh, uh, in uh, in Tipperary a couple of years ago. So they, they they have pedigree, but I suppose it's about converting it now to, to a couple of years down the line. But uh, again, Matt, nice nice spreads of clubs. Obviously, you're on Ben Rue. Excuse me, for being, uh, excuse me for being parochial now for a minute. There are three very good players from Dunwoo on it. <laughs> um, no, I'm serious. Um, yeah, we remember players players have won all Ireland medals with Skull Paul recently, and um, yeah. it's uh, the Dennehy brothers and their 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 older brother Liam is on the under twenty panel. So that's that family that has made a huge contribution to Dunwoo and Limerick over the years. As far as I know, Dara O'Carroll of Pro Kid Finney is he a nephew of the one and only Bog? Right, he is indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're right. Uh, the bog, the famous bog. Yeah. So uh, that, I, I will, that, that, I, I'm sure. I'm sure he was going to be at the match anyway, Matt. But now he has he a reason. Going to, he going to be at the match, but it, it, it's it's worth noting. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, look, uh, Shane Dowling. I just look at the backroom team there. Shane Dowling, obviously, the standout name being the manager. Uh, Liam Cronin, of course, uh, Captain Moorman, but obviously, Arts Reach uh, is where a lot of people would know him from. He's uh, one of the he's the coach, the selector. Uh, two selectors uh, involved: Andrew Ryan of Ballybricken, Darren Moynihan of Drummondalaka, and Gary McCarthy of Galbally is the goalkeeper coach, and uh, a number of other backroom uh, members there with Dara Drew continuing as uh, strength and conditioning for the team. So, uh, again. Group format, Dan, Matt. Dan, Dan Minahan has pedigree, you know. Dan Minahan um, led Cork to win the Cork County Junior A Championship and to within a point of beating Black Rock in the Munster Clubs final. So, um, mm. Dan knows a thing or two about uh, about preparing teams, and he's been involved with a number of teams, pretty successful, mind you. And um, I'm delighted to see him involved with 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 um, uh, with the Limerick <coughs> the minor team because he's. He, he has a contribution to make, trust me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's the 17. So they're in action. Four group games. Again, uh, the semi final has been done away with. So uh, it's actually the target is the top two. So uh, a win against Cork would be, uh, be the perfect tonic. Uh, or the perfect way to start the group campaign uh, and so we'll see come next Thursday evening how that one fares out. Uh, the Celtic Challenge, Matt, um, which is kind of a, a, a more of a development team uh, Limerick are in action against Clare this weekend. I think they've three games in all. You were telling me, uh, yeah. One, one O'Sullivan of, 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 uh, is is the manager. It's from Fiona originally, um, living in Adair, and he has assembled a, a, a pretty a pretty u- useful squad. Now they're going to have three games. It slipped up on me this week. Um, I, I actually thought I had a pencil for next week, but um, um, I, I I spoke with Owen a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they have a strong squad now. They 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 have a three match series. They're going to they're away to Clare this Saturday. Um, they're home to Galway in round two, and they're away to West Cork in round three. So, um, I presume that they will be graded after that. Yeah. This is one of the competitions, um, like Fail and Gale, that wasn't broken, but it was it was mended. Yeah. It was repaired, you know. And people had an awful lot more things that they should have been addressing. They, they, they were tweaking these things that didn't need it to be tweaked. So where you go from your group stage, I presume, into a quarterfinal. All mm. top counties in Ireland are taking part in the Celtic Challenge this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's been used uh, as a real development uh maybe for the weaker counties as well, but also for, for guys that maybe just mightn't might be up to the grade, as it were, for minor level. So it's a real opportunity for some of them to, to pull it's on. It's a fantastic competition, and we field the two teams in the past. Yeah, kind of in East and, was it East and Western well, well, City? We, they, were, they were down as Limerick Treaty and Limerick Sarsfields. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the city twice, and the West. Many, twice as many people got the games. The city yeah. and West and East and South. East and South, that was it. Yeah, yeah. So look, uh, there's there's great merit in it. So best of luck to Owen and uh, the, young, the youngsters there involved over the next few weeks. So we'll uh, we will keep an eye on it and uh, see how they they fare out. Matt, the I suppose the final uh, 
final code as it were to, to cover is Camogie the the uh, very Camogie League's 1B concluded last weekend Limerick uh, back to winning ways they had uh, suffered a couple of defeats which had uh, ultimately ended their league campaign but Joe Quaid decided it was time to shuffle the team, team a little bit I think um, and he got his reward with a win over uh, over Wexford in uh, I'm going to say Camilla but it wasn't it was moved wasn't it uh, to McNeville Park so uh, that's just just what Limerick needed, I guess, to round out the league. Obviously, they would have eyed promotion maybe at one point, but nevertheless, we finish on a win, look forward to the Munster Championship. Um, you know, I suppose that's that's a real positive for the for the ladies uh, after after a, a, a five game group series. I must put my hand up first and say that um, I got a lecture on pronunciation and elocution immediately after the game. Right. From one Miss Larkin from Mongret St. Paul's. If if you're looking, Alva, I've Alva. got your name right. She what had we said? We won't we won't even say it what we had said, but it's Alva Larkin. Uh, I was saying Elvi. Oh, like St. Elvis, but Alva Larkin. Saint Elvis, but it's Alva. Yes. So my 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 apologies, Alva. Uh, <laughs> but ser- seriously, um it it um I was absolutely thrilled coming out of McNeville Park on on, on, on Saturday. Um, I, I was thrilled. Um, it was a full Wexford squad, right. and it, it was the first time that, you know, notwithstanding Dublin's position at the moment, but you, 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 you were, you were, you, you were, you were pitting yourself and you were benchmarking yourself against the best. Mm. So Joe Quaid, he made a number of changes because he he wanted to run the rule over over more players as he heads into the Munster Championship game with Waterford on the 28th of, 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 of April. And after 18 minutes, Wexford led by 1-9 to two points. And you were inclined to pinch yourself and saying, uh, there are better things to be doing this afternoon than being here, you know. But yeah. straight after Wexford getting the goal, um, Limerick got a free. Quiva Costello took it. Quiva who got two goals and six points. Um, Quiva Costello got a free and it was one of those ones that were dropped in with precision aimed at creating the maximum disruption in the, in the defence and it fell and went straight to the net and it sort to revive Limerick and you know at one stage they were 10 points down but by half time they had it reduced to 3 um, the last two scores of the first half came from Lizanna Boylan, who got a goal, and she also got a point. But in the second half, now Quiva Costello was absolutely outstanding, Tom. Apart mm. from apart from the two six, now Wexford were, as Joe Quaid said to me afterwards, he said Wexford were bullying us. So he brought in some of his big guns that he had rested for the day. He brought in Mary O'Callaghan before half time, and after half time on the home straight. He he, um, he 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 brought in Sophie O'Callaghan and um, Neve Ryan, so that was fair power to be bringing to be able to bring off the bench. He also brought in Darla Egan. Now Rebecca De Lee was unable to come on because she was nursing an injury. So I, you know, I'm just saying to you what uh, the power that he had left off the team in the first place. But it was Neve Ryan with a couple of minutes to go. I think it was the 56 minute. She got possession out in the left. She worked her way in along the sideline before being upended in the square uh, for a penalty. And um, Quiva Costello got as perfect a penalty, Tom, as you will see, as you're likely to see. Right. You know, just gave the goalkeeper absolutely no chance whatsoever. Perfectly mm-hmm. hit, perfectly dispatched, perfectly directed. And um, Limerick had their tails up at this stage. You know, and they were dominating around the field. They had counteracted the physicality. You know, the girls that went in were making that presence felt. And Limerick won two late frees. It was level after the penalty. Won two late frees. And Kiva Costello converted them. And neither of them, Tom, were a gimme. They were both tricky frees. But as I said, Limerick tails were up. Costello was in the form of her life now. Throughout the game, both from play and from scoring. And she nailed the two. It was a great, great win. And I'm delighted for Joe that, you know, um, because, you know, he took a leap of faith coming back, you know. Mm. But, he, but he's he's after overseeing three wins in the league. 
that nobody could nobody could have legislated for what happened against Antrim. Like where <coughs> he picks his team, he loses his entire half back line, and he loses Lisanna Boylan from the forwards by the time they got to Antrim. You know, yeah. and to be in it with Antrim with 10 minutes to go, you know, will give you an idea of the newfound resilience that's in this team and the new confidence that's in this team. You know, I, I was thrilled leaving McNeville Park because there's mm. a lot of options. Uh, Tina Ryan was playing at corner back out of position. I thought I thought she was very, very, very good there. Um, Kira O'Riordan had, had a very good um, game at wing back. But who, who the fine game? Tom, was Jim Barrett in goals on her debut? Right. You know, it it, it 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 was it was a performance and an occasion for Joe Quaid and his management team that was littered with positives. You know, and um, I, I was absolutely delighted to see it. And and um, yeah, roll on, roll on the the Munster Championship. Now it's going to be a tough game against Waterford. Make no mistake about it. That's that's going to be tougher than Wexford, but. It's it's on in the TU Scaly grounds as a curtain raiser. Yeah. So uh, to Limerick and Tipperary. Mm. But um, you know, I I I I'd, I'd be looking forward to the championship. I think it's Kilkenny in the first round of the championship. Yeah. Just a, a note on the 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 curtain raiser, as you said there. Limerick playing against uh, uh, Tipperary in the senior men's senior hurling championship at four pm on the twenty eighth and at two. Is this uh, maybe one? 145 or I'm not sure the exact throw and it's or maybe I'm it's not sure of the throw in because I'm sure it would be subject to an extra time. Yeah, so but even nevertheless, I, I made the point last year. I think you were alongside me, Matt, in the press box in uh the two to US Gaelic rounds. Limerick played Claire in the Camogie in the okay. same round basically on the 30th of April, and then they played the men's senior match, which was effectively sold out. Nobody from Limerick bar I think two or three hundred people came out to support the ladies, and I tell you, if 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 my sister or a friend of mine was playing with Limerick, I'd have been embarrassed for them, and it's not their fault in no mind. But I think the the sporting public in Limerick would be wise to maybe row in a little bit more behind the Camogie ladies um, uh, against Waterford. They'll need it because Waterford, as we know, All Ireland finalists last year, one of the the top teams in the country. They'll need a bit of support. They don't need three hundred people. Uh, there for throwing, and then suddenly thirty thousand appear the minute their match is over. They need everyone there, or a lot of people there from from the get go. And I think, I think Joe would echo those sentiments. Would you agree? Oh, I would. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. Like the shocking statistic of the survey that was done there uh, recently, where was it fifty two or fifty four percent of people had admitted that they had never been to a ladies' sports fixture? Yeah, in any in any yes. cause, anything. <coughs> they don't. They do, they just don't know what they're missing. Mm. They don't yeah. know what they're missing, you know. Um, like the, the effort that the, the, the effort that the, that the women put in is equal. It's on a par with what the men put in. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And the quality, some of the quality of the camogie from both sides, Tom, was first class. Went for the full forward, Kira O'Connor. She was an excellent player. Midfield player Shelley Kehoe, an excellent player. Yeah. You know, and Wexford moved the ball around, and sometimes if men's team moved it the way they moved it, and the way Limerick moved it in the second half, and the way Limerick drove on, and the way Limerick pressed, you know, geez, um, people didn't know like, and yeah. they don't know what they're missing. Mm. Yeah, like, I it think was it... a paltry, it was a paltry crowd that I don't even know if it was even four hundred that was mm. there. But by God, did they enjoy it? It's like. This is worth having a look at it. Yeah, even 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 once once a year, people should indulge themselves just to see what it's about. And obviously, there's the, the thing that people ignore is there, there's people clubmates who wouldn't go to see them. You know, people neighbours and friends, and they wouldn't ever ever even think to go down and watch them play camogie, which is um, which Absolutely. is which is only, it's only holding the game back. I think Matt at this stage, you know, it's, it's reflected in every parish across the country. Tom, you're absolutely a hundred percent right. I hate to say you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it it's a it's a it's a reflection, but like I cannot understand for the life of me why people will not turn out and see the ladies' sport. Look, try it. Yeah, you don't be fine. Yeah, well, yeah. anyone anyone that has a ticket for Limerick and Tipperary, it won't cost you anything more. Bar a couple of hours, so you just get in a little bit earlier than you normally would, and uh, 
enjoy enjoy the spectacle. Uh, just another thing that Limerick well, more the, more the local hostelries and and um, yeah. you know support the team, you know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, the uh, Limerick Camogie draw. We mentioned it last week. Just to give it another plug, uh, they're giving away the uh, the Ford Cougar. Joe Quaid is not included in the uh, prize, but uh, he'll get off the car, get out of it if you do win it. Um, or else the other prize, the alternative, is forty five thousand euros in cash. Uh, so the tickets are available. Um, to a link link that's been uh, circulated by Limerick Camogie, uh, brand new two four one four Kuga or forty five thousand in cash, uh, fifty euros entry, and there's uh, only five thousand nine hundred ninety nine tickets in total available. Many of them snapped up already, so do support that, and that uh, will help the development of Limerick Camogie into the uh, short and long term future. Uh, so just a reminder on that one, Matt. I think uh, I think that covers us. I'm uh, ready to hot put it out to Six Mile Bridge to see the under twenty herders. Uh, I think we've uh, we've covered it all off this week, have we? <laughs> yeah, I think we've covered. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, it's it, we we started off on a somber note, you know, but certainly, yeah. Look, it's 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 the passage of life, I I presume, Tom. Um, it, it it'll be some time before certainly personnel come to terms with it, but it is what it is now, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's of course a reminder that the late uh, Dennis O'Brien uh, of. Uh, Weekly Observer and Veil Star, a uh, contributor uh, in many fronts, especially on the photography front. Uh, Matt, uh, thank you very much for your time this Friday evening. Uh, anyone else uh, tuning in, listening, watching, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll chat to you again next week.